Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're in the woods and we're going to go through 10 ways that you can instantly improve your portraits. So guys, basically I made three fatal errors today. <laughs> fatal error number one was I trusted three weather forecasts and they all were wrong. Uh, error number two is that I didn't bring any waterproof bottoms. That's a fatal error. And error number three is that I haven't put waterproof mascara on. So at the end of this video, we might look a lot worse than we do right now, but we're gonna go through how to make some beautiful pictures by correcting some small mistakes that I see all of the time. So as always, this is my opinion, but let's go to the first location and get started. By the way, if you haven't already, press the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, because basically that will enrich your life and it helps me, so. That's great. Morning. It's V dark, V dark. The first mistake that I wanna go through basically, uh, let's go and make it. So let's go and make this mistake. So we're in this woodland. This is one of my favorite woods to go to. This is where I had my wedding pictures taken. Uh, <laughs> and it's beautiful. So we've got Alfie with us, who is basically just gonna help us out because he's good and will behave perfectly. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and set him up in a situation. I've seen one. So the first mistake that I wanna run through basically, I'm gonna recreate it and then I'm gonna correct it. So we'll move Alfie, obviously perfectly behaved model, onto our little position. Steady baby, hop up, ready, wait in friends. Down, down. So I see loads of people doing this. Look, oh, it's a cute dog. What a beautiful photograph. And yes, it is a beautiful photograph, but there is a massive tree coming out of his head. Wait, so all you would need to do is move slightly to one side or the other to get a much cleaner background. Now I've put myself right next to a big massive tree, but if this massive tree wasn't there, waiting, ready, you get a much better photograph with no tree coming out of his head. Okay, good lad. Super, super simple trick, guys. Just look at what's behind the dog. That's it, really. That's all there is to it. Let's go to problem number two. So we've got Alf, don't you dare go in that big muddy puddle. <laughs> so we've got this beautiful, long, straight track in front of us. So we might as well do a classic portrait, which would be super nice. I'm gonna choose this way as the background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put Alf into a down in the middle-ish. Um, and we'll set up problem number two. Ready, bud? Lie down, lie down. Good, wait. Okay, so this is the point where I'm gonna get really wet and really muddy with dog photographers. So let's get, owie, my knees. <laughs> let's get a good shot of our dog. So we're sat here, and we're like, oh good, Alf, ready? Where's ball? So there's some gun shots going off, down. So it's a bit worrying for him. Good boy, ready? So I'm moving my focus point because I can't not, sorry guys. So we're taking a shot and that's great, but wait, look at what happens if you end up here. I'm gonna have to zoom out and touch down. Ready, where's ball? Where's ball? Good, good. Wowee. So having some of this foreground air nice and blurry, we've got the background air nice and blurry. Lie down, good boy. And we've got him slap bang in the middle. So getting down lower is so much better than being higher up. Okay, good boy. Got brambles going on. Alfie out the way, buddy. Got some fallen stuff on here. We'll just move the things that have fallen onto it. I'm wondering, can anybody guess what we're pointing out here? Put our gloves on. Right, uh, I don't have your ball. 
brambles getting eaten by the brambles let's take a picture so I, oh look cute shot cute shot We're about 135 mil nice photograph but what would happen if we went closer so this uses the principles in the video about relative distances to create beautiful backgrounds so yes it is a closer shot but the background looks a lot better okay good boy yes, i did it i quite like these little heather bushes which have all died but we'll have to come back when they are not dead because that would be better we're going to put out within these bushes and then look at the best distances for space around the subject so we'll put him somewhere in a gap so if we're at 135 mm this far away there is nowhere near enough space around him to make a nice photograph it's just not going to happen that is too close so what we can do is if we move back not too far, just enough. Make sure that we can get a good composition. A little, little bit more, let's zoom out a touch. Just take one safe shot, even though I know I've got that bush there, so I'm gonna move slightly to the left. Put it down. So the camera is really, really low. It's on the floor. And we're just peeking through, making sure there's nothing covering his eyes. I'm okay with the bit over his nose, wait. I'm going to flatten it and we're just creating, waiting, a great shot. Ready, ready, beautiful. Let me go back into 135. Beautiful focal length, 135. And okay, good boy. So if we have a look at those pictures, could have done with a bit more space above, not going to lie. It's hard to see when you're in the back of this. Um, but those are pretty beautiful photographs and when you compare those with space around the ears, space around the paws, space around the dog, allowing him to breathe, when you compare them with the ones that we set up that were too tight, it's massively, massively different. So they're pretty adorable. I'm going to shoot her more often I think. Beautiful. Yep. Okay. We're going to do all about composition of your dog, like posing of the dog. So let's set Alf up in this nice open grassland environment. Okay, so there's some long bits which are probably going to screw us up. But if Alfie waits there, wait. Put grass right in front of his eye, but we'll still be able to illustrate. So if we focus on him, you look at the composition of him side on. That grass is right in front of his face. So if you see him side on, it's not a bad shot. We're nice and low down, we're at eye level or below, which is super important, eye level or below. And it's a nice shot, but the composition of it's really difficult because he's facing completely to the side and it would be even worse if he was looking that way. So what you can either do is zoom out so you've got a bigger shot, but then you lose your narrow depth of field your blurry background, remember the last video that we did on this subject. So what you can do is just alter the stand of the dog. You should be able to see with him stood straight on, it's a better overall composition at the exact same focal length that we were at before. So the only thing that's changed is we've altered the angle that he was stood and now the composition works much better without having to go ahead and zoom out. So we're at 135 now. If we were out, now it looks too big. There's too much space around the subject. And therefore, that comes back to getting closer or zooming in. So it's a good space. Okay, good boy. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do, let's set Alfie up as people set up their dogs for shots. Alfie, come. Wait, I'm setting Alfie up. Let's go solid 135 again. And do you know what, let's do, why not? Let's do portrait, although it's really hard for me to hold on this. Super off balance, waiting, ready, wait. Now that background looks not great, wait. So if we bring our forward, so keeping similar distance away from the dog, 
but we've moved him off the background. I mean, not gonna lie, his tail's not helping us here today, everybody, but you should be able to see a huge difference in the background. So that's next tip, move your subject away from the background. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at basically what you can do in camera to make the shot easier to work with afterwards. So Alfredo, we're gonna put him in the bush. Alfredo, ready? Can we go in? This is what um, the vast majority of people do. Okay, so the focus point's pretty much in the middle. We focus and we take the shot. So we have to be a little bit further away because the focus point's in the middle. I think that's the middle. And it means that the composition, we've got to do lots of cropping and it's harder to work with. Now, what if we just moved our focus point and composed in camera for a nice rule of thirds shape there, getting down nice and low. And what if we just shot it basically as it was going to be? It's a little tight. And the difference is that you won't really have to crop. Good boy. Okay. Good lad. Let's look at which focus mode we want to be using for portraits. So if we put our down on this loggy thing, fronts, down, lie down, lie down. Good, wait. So if we put our on that log, bring it into a position. So we're nice and low down. This is with single point focus, right? So you can pick what you're focusing on, waiting. What if we weren't using single point? What if we were using wide? And therefore, the camera picks what to focus on. Do you see? So those lines, those green boxes are what it's focusing on and it will pick. Now, this has got animal eye detection, so it should pick his eye, which is great, but it wouldn't always work that way. So if we change that to people, it shouldn't probably pick him up. And do you see the problem? of using the wide and going, hey camera, choose what we're focusing on today because this is not focusing on him at all. So it's going, oh, there's a face, but again, it's picking up the log. So if we switch our, put that back on to help us out and switch our focus point to a single point on the small one on the Sony cameras, then we can just move that little bracket around, pick our focus point and shoot. Okay. Good lad. Okay, so we we'll, might as well just carry on with the next one, which basically you see loads of people find amazing objects in the environment, such as logs and trees and things like that. And they put their dogs on them in like a down or put their front feet up. And what that will do basically is give you kind of like a frontal view. So if we set that up as it might happen here, yeah. front, get down, wait. So this is how many people would do it. They go, okay, we've got this adorable dog, obviously, in an adorable location. Let's find a gap in these branches here. And we're gonna shoot down. Good. He <laughs> looks like he's got an extra long leg. So 200 mil, we're gonna do both of these out. So yeah, it's kind of cute. It's cute, right? So back, good. That's better. So it's cute, I'm not saying it's not guys, it's very durable, but if you use the line of the log, it will help you out a lot more. So let's alter the positioning and reshoot. Ready? So having him at the other end, lie down ready, where's Ball? Where's Ball? Where's Ball, down? Can you down? Good, wow, ready, steady, hide, 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 hide. Beautiful, okay. Wow, hey, good boy. So what we're gonna do now basically is we're gonna shoot in both directions on here because we're gonna do a nice portrait of Alfie. I'm gonna show you the difference that it makes when you have a super bright background versus one that is a little bit more controlled when you're working in a woodland environment. So we'll set Alf up at the wrong side, which isn't wrong. It's just not as good in my opinion. And then we'll set him up at the right side. So Alfredo, may I borrow you? Of course I can. Of course you can. Go here. Come here. Go sit. Uh, what should we do? Should we do flat down? Yeah, let's do flat down. Down. Good boy, wait. So super bright background, guys. You can see this. And the picture's fine, like it's not bad. It's just really bright background. So it means for him to stand down, it's gonna be quite difficult. It's not super bright today because it's not a nice day today, but 
it's still quite distracting. Let's switch them around the other way and see what it looks like. Do you guys see the massive difference that having the bright versus the darker background has on an image? It's insane. Look at my legs. So guys, that should be everything, I think. I think that's everything on my little list of things I wanted to go through today. We've got a guy with a dog walking towards us, so Alfie, come here. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope it gives you some more ideas and more things that you can try. So as a quick run through, I'm just gonna put on the screen right now all of those different tips. And I want you guys to go out and practice and try. Tag me and stuff on Instagram, because that would be great. And if you haven't already, please do press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out. It'll give you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it. We're gonna get out of the way of this guy now who's walking towards us and we'll see you all again really, really, really soon.